In this video, I'm going to go over the temp name function in C. So the temp name function will return a temporary file name that is known to be available. Many C programs will use temporary files, say to store information to free up random access memory, or they might use temporary files to store the state of the program in order to recover from a program crash. So this function is going to be useful for being able to reliably create temporary files as it provides a name that is known to be available, as opposed to using a file name or some random name that could possibly be taken already. So let's go over how it works. Here I'll say car file name and then L underscore TMP NAM for the length. So this is a constant value that's going to be able to store any temporary file name that's generated by the function. And we'll call the function like this. We'll say TMP NAM and we'll pass it file name. And the file name is going to be stored into this character array as a string. We could output it here to see what it looks like. We'll say printf percent s slash n and we'll put the file name here. So we'll save this here and then we'll do a compilation here and we'll run it and we get this temporary file name here. So we could open up a file with this name and use it as a temporary file. Now there's one variation with this function. If we were to pass in the argument null, it'll actually return a pointer to the file name string. So I could say here car star file name two, and I'll say is equal to TMP NAM, and I'll pass in the argument null. And it'll actually return a pointer to a string that we could use as a temporary file name. So I could say here printf percent s slash n, and we'll output file name two. And then if I compile this and run it, we get the second temporary file name here. Now notice it's different than the first one. That's because each temporary file name is going to be unique and it's going to be available. Now the one thing with this approach here is that technically the file name exists in this buffer that's going to be overridden the next time we call temp name. So we don't really want to use this approach unless we're sure we're only going to call temp name once because it's possible this file name could be overridden the next time we go to use it. So we could actually open a file with one of these temporary file names. Let's do that with the first file name here. I'll say here, file star file is equal to f open file name for writing. We'll check to see if the file is open correctly. If it wasn't, f open will return null. So we'll say if file is equal to null, printf error opening temporary file and we'll return one. Otherwise, we'll just write one line of content to the file. We'll say f printf file and we'll put some content to the file. And then when we're done, we'll close the file. We'll say f close file here and we'll save that. So now if I do a compilation and I run it, we should actually have this content here written to this file here, temp.0. and the rest of it here. So let's actually go to that directory and check out that file. Here I'll say cd slash var slash tmp and we'll go to that directory. And if I do an ls, we should be able to see that file there. And we do. Let's actually see the contents of the file now. I'll say cat tmp.0 and we get some content there. So we were actually able to write this content to that temporary file that we just opened. So that's how we could use this function is to actually open up these files, write some content to them, and maybe use that content later if our program crashes or use it if suddenly more RAM becomes available and we can pull that data back into RAM, for example. Now, one thing we could do is we could delete that file after we're done with it. So I'll navigate back to the directory with my source code here. And then I'm going to use the remove function to actually remove the temporary file after I've used it. So here I'll say remove file name. And I'll save this here. Now if I do a recompilation and I run it here, we get this file name here. And that's where the content was written to as we've seen. But if I go to that directory now, and I try to look for that file, we're not going to see it there. The other one's there. But this one here, 
from the most recent run of the program, it's just not there. And that's because we just removed it after we're done with it. So that's another thing we could do with our temporary files is after we're done with them, we can just remove them using the remove function as well. So even though the attempt name function is used in C programs, it's actually considered deprecated now. There's actually better functions we could use, including MKS temp, and I'll cover those in additional videos. One of the reasons why it's deprecated is that technically all it's giving you is an available file name. It doesn't open the file for you. So technically, even though it's unlikely, it's possible that another program could open up that temporary file name before your program can, because all it gets is the file name. That's actually considered a bit of a security risk. So that's why the temp name function is being sort of phased out in favor of other functions that are more reliable. What they do is open the file and return a file descriptor that allows you to access the file. I'll cover those in a future video. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.